actually, in my mind, has two different arguments. Um, it, it could set a pattern, or at least the perception of the pattern for future redevelopment. The idea is to create more of an urban streetscape. That is admittedly very difficult when you have large buildings just on any site. Um, so there's some consideration to be granted there. Um, and then the other consideration is actually street in general. We all know that it's a blighted urban corridor that is in desperate need of redevelopment. This is the first significant redevelopment proposal to come along. Um, and it's good to at least have something you know, to do that. Um, we have been working with applicants since December. Um, the site plan and the building drawings have been revised multiple times. Um, and we have made a lot of progress. We've come a long ways. And, and like I said in here, I think they have presented with, to you finally the, the best case scenario with this size building and the project that they have to work out. Um, there are several people here representing the applicant. Um, they've got another PowerPoint. They want to show you a little bit about Walmart Market so you kind of understand what it is and what it is not. Um, and several people that can answer questions. Some of their design professionals are here. Um, but we're recommending approval based on these submitted drawings. Yes, ma'am. The subject property is the Honda Kia. That building? Yeah, the top building is the Honda dealership. The one in the middle is the Kia. Um, the street that comes in from the east, that's Volunteer Drive. And Zacadeus is another popular place there on the other corner. So it's straight across the street. Any other questions for Matt? Who would like to speak on behalf of the applicant? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is David Kirk. I'm with the law firm of Trout and Sanders here representing uh, Walmart. Uh, I'd like to put up the presentation. I'd like to thank Matt and his staff uh, for sitting down and taking time to work with us through, uh, through this process. And as he says, I think we've got best case scenario here for, uh, for the redevelopment of, of this property. Um, with me um, this afternoon uh, is Sunday Lure. She is the architect. Uh, next to her is um, Justin Houston. There we go. Justin Houston, who's our project engineer. Uh, so if you have questions about, about the site plan, he is, he is the expert on that. Uh, and also with us uh, is my former colleague at Trout and Sanders, uh, who's an attorney here, I imagine you're familiar with from, from these meetings, Will Nige. And we're happy to answer any questions you might have. Um, a question a lot of people have, uh, as Matt indicated at the very beginning, is when you say the word Walmart, typical mental images of a, of a super center or maybe of a Sam's Club, uh, which is run by Walmart. Uh, but a Walmart neighborhood market, as he said, is a grocery store. There are between two and 300 of these nationwide. Um, started working on these in Georgia just a few years ago, uh, mostly in the, in the metro area, typically in shopping. A lot of them have been in shopping centers where the anchor has gone out of business uh, and been able to come in and, and revitalize the shopping centers. Um, a lot of those, as I said, are in the metro land area. There are a number of standalone stores like this one uh, that are that are coming online as well. Um, this is the first in the Valdosta area. We believe it will do well. We certainly hope it will do well, uh, and that there'll be uh, more uh, in the future. Um, it is a, is a store centered around groceries, and, and uh, does have a pharmacy, has a drive-through uh, pharmacy. Uh, if you like, you can have had the sick kids uh, in the car or kids in the car. Period. It's a lot easier to use a drive-through pharmacy. Than Side. Uh, and the consumables by that mean paper products and laundry detergents, those sorts of things. Uh, strong focus on convenience for the customer. Uh, I'm guilty of it as well. When I go to the super center to get one thing, I usually come out with, with several, which is uh, sure good for the, the 
company, but if you just want to get some, pick up a, a rotisserie chicken and a bag of salad and you know, some, something like that for dinner on your way home from work, uh, this is what, uh, what that is intended to, uh, to, to meet your convenience needs. And in areas uh, such as this that don't have uh, very convenient uh, grocery uh, service. About 75 to 80 associates uh, are employed here. Uh, the ones that have been built um, over the last several years have ranged from about 40,000 to about 50,000 feet square feet. And those have typically been in the, uh, in the supermarket or anchor slot in, in stores. <coughs> I'm sorry, it's in uh, shopping centers. Uh, the, the one that you have before us is, is, the, uh, is really the standalone uh, prototype of a little less than 42,000 square feet. It, as I said, it's not a super center. It's not the old general merchandise Walmart that you may remember from many years ago. Uh, and it is certainly not uh, the camel's nose under the tent to build a super center uh, in the future. It is a, a standalone uh, grocery store. And let me just sort of walk you through uh, what the interior would look, at, look like. Uh, as I said, a couple feet. The only thing missing uh, in these pictures are the customers. Um, but uh, as you can see, it looks like a typical well-stocked grocery store uh, that you would find with produce, baked goods, uh, fresh meat, dairy products, uh, and pharmacy. As, as Matt indicated, um, we are asking for uh, five, uh, five variances uh, from from your unified development code. Uh, we have worked very closely with the team and staff uh, to minimize uh, the, uh, the number of variances and maximize our compliance, if not with the absolute strict letter of, of the ordinance, with the intent of the ordinance, such as with the facade, varied colors and textures uh, of the materials on the front. We actually added a, a planter uh, in, the, in the front. You can see that on Elevations. We have a planter in the front to add a little more uh, variety to the front of the building as well. Uh, so we're here to answer any questions you might have. Uh, again, we have uh, the architect uh, and the engineer here and appreciate your attention uh, and respectfully request that you accept the staff's recommendation of approval and approve these variances so we can get to work. Thank you. Thank you. Now, just to be sure, clear. Once the variance is granted, they cannot expand the size of the facility. That, that would be correct, and it would not be our intent to expand the size of the facility. This is, this is a standalone grocery store. I think they could expand it if they had room. Um, right now, with the size building that's being proposed and the parking that's required, they're a maximum. Um, but the variance has nothing to do, or well, the variances have nothing to do with size of building. Right, I know, but. Except the distance. Um, so as far as converting this to a Walmart super center, the property is just nowhere near large enough to accommodate it. You can try to imagine that that site plan, uh, a building five times that size, it just, it, it can't work. Has the buffer been addressed on the east side of this Walmart, which is in the rear of this new building? The rear side, the west side, um, the buffy arch required, which they will do, and there's no variance issue there at all. You know, it's a 20 foot wide buffer or 10 feet with a solid fence. Um, that distance is 50 feet or more. That's in their side plan. So they're way above the code that comes above the board. What about, what about to the side of the Walmart store, between Walmart and the residential property that's right. immediately if you look at your site plan in your packet, there are three parcels to the south. Mm -hmm. uh, two of those that are closest to Ashley, those are zoned commercial, so there's no buffer room for fire. The one on the west side is zoned residential. There's also a point to the buffer. And actually, along the aisle, it's not even a buffer yard, it's just a street yard um, that's required there. So, again, <coughs> much greater distance. Than what is needed down here. Here's the other buffer yard requirement that's in the We have, we have a, uh, Justin has a site plan where we put up that will illustrate where those, those 
bumpers are, that may be more helpful than the black and white. Yeah, these are newly planted trees. We're going to have to. They're going to cut that down. Yes. Because they don't have a substitute with other trees. Yes, ma'am. Well, but the thing is, those trees that are there now, they're, they're pretty big. I mean, some of them are struggling, but some of them are pretty big. And if you cut down a pretty big tree and then you put back a, this big around something, it takes a long time for it to get bigger. And people that live on Iola, right now, look at a nice wooded, can't see through to the car dealership thing which is going to be scraped down, and then some skinny little trees put there, then they're going to look at the back of the portion. As part of, and they haven't gotten this far with the engineering of the site, so the exact size, shape, configuration of the pond is still on them. As part of the landscape plan review, they've got to inventory existing trees, go through the tree removal process. And so significant trees get accounted for, and they've got either remain or be replaced higher ratio, but they haven't gotten that far with the details on the side. I would think if trees are required back there, it would be a lot more cost effective to try and keep as many of those as possible instead of having to you know, take them down and replace them with a substantial tree. But also keep in mind the property along Iola, even though it's forested, has been zoned highway commercial for years and, and nothing's required to remain there in terms of trees. Right. Concern is just the 
closeness of the people that are right on the corner here, um, on this bottom corner, the people that have the house that is not commercial property. They're the last people sort of on the block that are a residence. And they are relatively close to the corner of Walmart and right there. Um, and it, it looks like you've got a lot of trees planned for out in the parking lot and a lot of trees buffering Iola, but it looks like, I, it's hard to tell from where I am, but are those trees or are those just shrubs boring between that residential property and, you know, I, I think that they would need a fairly substantial screen at least between them and, and, and the property. There. And that's one of the few places where the buffer yard is actually required to be. Right. The 20 feet wide, the trees and shrubs. Okay. The rest of it's just street yard along the streets, which is 10 feet. So. Well, I guess what I'm saying is you could put you could put a lot of shrubs in that buffer yard and it would not necessarily give them much of a buffer between that and looking at the back corner of a Walmart and the, and, and the compactor um, on the you know, and that, that sort of service area. Um, and so I'm just saying, I, I think that, that as long as that, some commitment could be made to that corner there, that larger shrubs or larger trees or something could be placed in that area to give them a more substantial buffer. I believe we also, I was talking just now, I believe we also have a screen, a fence. Right. Even though I, I believe if you have a fence, Cut the buffer to 10, but we're adding the fence and keeping the buffer at 20. Right. Is that correct? I believe so. Okay, so we're, as the board, we're looking at five requests here. Am I safe to assume yes. that, that number four and number five are, are, everybody would be okay with those? Because I'd like to do the, I mean, one approved, I don't want to dissect them into five separate. But I mean, based on what Matt told us, number four, regarding the drive-through and number five regarding the parking spaces. Well, I, I think, Mr. Chair, we still need to entertain any objections, period. Oh, I, yeah, I certainly agree. I'm not saying that we, you know, we can't object to anything. I'm just saying, um, can we focus on one, two, and three, and let me hear the consensus of... Provided uh, there's not a motion to approve all five. True. So, and I'm, I'm fine with how it I, works. I'm just saying for... I'd like to make a suggestion that we entertain all objections and then decide whether or not we want to um, bifurcate. I, I agree, but process. what I hear is no objection to any of the five that, that are actually what we're here. Well, we to don't have okay, we're not we're not heard the objections yet. Yeah. That's what she's getting You're yeah. saying public. Yeah, that's what I get it all down. I'm sorry, I misunderstood. Okay. Okay, so thank you. Thank you. Is anyone else here in support that would like to speak? My name is Lydia Kite and I live on Manola Front in 1512, right across from where they wanted their home. And I wish they had done that 33 years ago because <laughs> I lived that long in the house. And my concern would have been, yeah, I love to look at the trees and the bushes, but if they plant some more trees or they have a whatever fence, that'd be okay. I think the idea is all great. You know, there's the BSU and then on the other side of Ashley, there's all homes and people that live there. And I do all my grocery shopping at Walmart anyway, so <laughs> now only Walmart would buy my house, you know. <laughs> 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 but I think that's a, a real good idea. Yeah, it's all going to be neat, and, and it's going to have a lot of people. And when I moved there in grief '82, there were all the people there. They all died. And I mean, every one of them. Four houses up the street, and then about three houses down. So I'm the only one. My sister said, "You better leave before you die," because I'm the only one left. <laughs>
board, um, is there any opposition to this request? Anyone like to speak in opposition? Can I just ask a general question? Yes, sir. Trip uh, signals here, let them know anyone playing short drive. I was just wondering about like traffic lights or ingress, ingress on the front. Is it just, there's two exits on Ashley Street and one on the Brookwood, is that right? I was wondering if they're going to have a traffic light or anything, just kind of blow the track. That would be a thing. That's right. They, they have yet to go through the full development review process. Okay. Um, engineering is going to look at it to see if the traffic study is going to be warranted or at least a rudimentary one. But yeah, they're concerned about the traffic generator of this size retail store. Um, there's multiple access points. Those are controlled by DOT. And so they've got to follow all of those standards. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, we don't know about that yet. Right. True. Yeah. It's too yeah. early to know exactly <coughs> what's going to be needed. But, you know, Does your property line up with this street? Are you directly across the street? Mm -hmm. and, and this, if I get, So they do line up there. Thank you. I don't know if they do like that, that line's up there, but I'm not sure. Okay. Okay. So on your site plan, I believe it's a clear call. Oh, that was one of the things we did with these site plan revisions. And, you know, there have been some earlier versions that show these curb cuts a little too close to this intersection. One of the things we requested was to scoop them away and make the intersection safer. Right now, you've got them right here. It's a little bit of a major problem. So if anything, this really improves in terms of spacing. It just may be a little more traffic generated here than the dealerships are generated. I was just curious if, if this exit point or entry point lined up with Bolleton across the street, would that be the one? They, they line up with commercial drives that are across the street. But nothing's lined up with the Bolton intersection. I try to keep a good distance away from it. Well, could though the entrance be made at the Bolton and make a traffic light there, placing the parking lot? Right. If there's enough traffic generation to warn the traffic signal, that's something that's got to be looked at in engineering. Otherwise, you want to sort of spread the traffic. Um, it does sort of want to build up the side sign that we do with the other. Well, right, but if you're in the grocery store and you want to make a left, out of the parking lot. You have to cross over one lane of southbound and the turning lane and then turn out to the north there. Uh, that could be tricky. It's, it's tricky all up and down actually right now. Okay, well I can't say the number of times where somebody stops to let someone pull out and then another car crashes into them. So, you know. That's right. So is there anyone else here who'd like to speak either for or against this? Anything else to add that? I mean, it's at the board's discretion if you want to take it as one group or just do it down the list individually. It's up to you all how to do it. It's not often we get five bearings from one time. Um, since they all pertain to one site, and it's three of them are grouped together, section of the code, you might as well see if you can do all the things. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm.
Um, I would like to see something additionally, since you are going further back from the road. You're going 206 feet. I would like to see a street yard wider than 10 feet, even if it means pushing the building back 10 feet, because you've got 50 feet to play with on the back. I'd like to see some kind of a wall or planning, and I'm not sure, help me out here, Matt, what we can suggest, but this is an important development for that street, and it, again, the aesthetic, I love the way the building looks, I think it's a, such a positive for that street, but this would even add more. On that note, I'm sort of thinking, I, I imagine in my head when, when Bill and I talked about this the other night, um, almost like a park. Right now the car dealership is just like a lot of pavement and a lot of cars. So if you think about a grocery store, it's going to have a lot of traffic, and I'm, I'm thinking it would be really nice if there were trees and park-like and pretty because we could make a big step forward on Ashton Street making it beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> I think you said All right. Um, and I think they'll have some commentary on that. This site plan has been massaged and redesigned so many times and they've compacted it in pretty tight to get the pieces to fit and still trying to minimize the setback distance from the building to Ashley. The building started much further back than what you're seeing now. Um, and I think they found a way to trim a couple more feet off of that. Um, the urban commercial core, which is where this setback provision is coming from, um, the goal of that is to create an urban streetscape along Ashley. Um, many of the existing buildings on this part of Ashley are already close, or uh, within 65 feet or within 90 feet, so you have a little bit of that fabric already in place, and so that's where that those code provisions are coming from. That's the intent. Um, if, and this is some of the early discussions that I had, if the building is not going to be up close, is there something that can be done to help mimic an urban streetscape in a new building? And there's some pros and cons to all of that, think, just to think out loud for it. If you've got a small frontage to put something there in the place of a building, like maybe a low wall or some extra landscaping, that might accomplish it. One of the concerns I have is this is quite a bit of frontage. And so putting something there other than a building, I mean, it sort of gets lost in terms of what you see. Um, the other point of view is looking from further down the road, what type of edge do you see along the road? Two or three foot high wall with shrubbery around it is going to disappear because the shrubbery will grow over. Something taller maybe in the fence, you know, like a decorative fence, like in front of BSU, okay. But again, a lot of frontage. Sometimes you can do things in sections to sort of give the impression of a linear edge, but it's not a solid wall, but just pieces. And it all boils down to one thing in my mind, and I'll show you this with some of you who've asked me questions before this about some of these details, is I'm more worried or more concerned about the quality of the streetscape than I am the quantity. Code requires a minimum of 10 feet wide with a certain number of trees and shrubs. If you could take the 10 feet and increase it to 15 or 20 feet, have you really accomplished much in terms of a couple few hundred feet of street frontage? Is it going to be even noticeable? Weighed against what it does to the impact of the site. Um, if there's something that can be done, and I think they're wanting to do a nice street yard, one of the things I know they're concerned about is visibility of these little driveway intersections. So they've got to be careful what they put in this way. Um, Sixty percent of all the trees that are required around the parking lot and along streets are required to be canopy trees. So in other words, not a great myrtle, you know, but live oaks and some other things. Some of those species do not do well in close proximity to parking lots and roads because of the heat and the lack of root space. Um, we have a new city arborist on board who's very well versed in these things and he's very flexible with design and imaginative. 
district. So I think he could work with them to come up with a good streetscape. If this could be something above minimum, perhaps some guidance in terms of quantities of shrubberies, if maybe that's an issue, or adding street furniture or something else. But it's hard to dictate specifics when we don't have a specific plan yet laid out. Uh, because again, they're still in the conceptual stage. They haven't gotten into the engineer drawing. If you want to prescribe an extra few feet, all right, they can do an extra few feet and shift things as best they can. But I'm not convinced it's going to quite have the effect that we might think it does. I mean, I've thought about it, and I don't really have a clear solution. Um, one, and this is again just thinking out loud, the, you have a row of tree aisles. Okay, you have the street yard along Ashley, you come back, you know, about 40, 50 feet from Ashley, which is about where a building would otherwise be required. They're showing a row of tree aisles. You could stipulate that those aisles be canopy trees only. And so you get a little bit of an edge back off of Ashley about where the, the buildings are. That may be one possibility. Um, it also doesn't interfere with their visibility at intersections, and they just just a regular standard street yard to augment it. I'm looking down. Yeah, you're looking at it. And I'm assuming that the I'm talking about this canopy, road right, right here. Right. A lot of those are canopy trees, correct? That's right. I'm assuming they're not a 10 foot wide or a 9 and a half foot wide shrub. If those canopies are wider than the African park complexes, and the only reason I notice it is the 65 feet is about here on the road, which by code that's where the buildings would be. So in essence, a row of more substantial trees sort of creates that edge. It's just another way to try and meet the intent of the ordinances. Now, I just have a little here. Why aren't these trees larger versus to the neighborhood? They're, they're tree symbols, they're not actual. Yeah. Well, that's just, you know, okay. conceptually. But conceptually, these look larger on the other side. And typically, yeah. in buffer yard trees, have to be canopy and evergreen. Okay. Even though they don't look quite so big. They don't draw on canopy. Yeah. 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 Of course, right. we, will, we will, of course, work with the arborist team. And they don't have a choice about that. Um, as Matt said, we have been over this site plan several times. We've rotated the building uh, until we found out about the George Dot pipe that was would have been mm -hmm. right, right through the middle of the building, which we, we absolutely cannot interfere with. Uh, and in talking with, with uh, Justin uh, before the meeting, that five feet, this site is so tight that that five feet potentially kill the project, quite frankly. And I don't mean that to, I'm not saying that to scare you all, I'm saying that that's the reality. The site is so tight, it'd be great if we didn't have to ask for any variances, uh, but uh, the site is, is unique, it's, it is a tight site. Uh, we want to serve the neighborhood, uh, but if we start carving away at, at what's already a very constrained site, Result may not be anything any of us want. Uh, what I can commit to, to doing is uh, with you know, Justin and Matt is making sure that we do focus on the quality of, of that upper yard as opposed to uh, just the, simply the width. So it is something that, that um, will not only be something that we will, that everybody will like to look at, but will set a, a good tone, a good first step toward what we hope to be, what we expect to be, continued revitalization along the board. Okay, do we have any other comments or questions for them regarding the setbacks? If not, I'd kind of like to hear what Joe's thoughts are on the facade materials. And, um, and the, Big two, I mean, they're 62% they're on the front and 62% on the north, which are 12% above uh, on the two sides that you really see on the, yeah, 62% on the north and 62% on the front. The other two, you, know, you really can't see it all anyway. Um, and I'm not trying to steer anybody in any direction, but um, do y'all have any concerns over that? And then any comments on number three? 
Where was the raised bed you talked about on the Thank you. 